Hey everyone, today we're gonna to do a quick video on what cell phone service I think is the best for you if you're traveling and going on a cruise. Let's go talk about it. Hey everyone, John here from Bite Size Cruises. Welcome to the channel. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for coming to check out our channel. We are a travel agency trying to give you the best possible information about cruising so that you can plan and go on an amazing cruise vacation, which is what we are all super passionate about. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about cell phone service, kind of the when and where and which one you should use. Let's get into it a little bit. So I recently changed, I used to have AT&T, and I recently changed and we'll get into that in just a few minutes. First of all, let's get into the moment you walk on board a ship, if whether you have the internet package or not, my advice to you is to put your phone into airplane mode. Get out all of those like final texts and calls that you have to do. Otherwise you're gonna forget to do it. There is no real situation where you should leave your cellular service on during the cruise. You will start seeing that Carnival has AT&T 5G service on a cruise ship. They do, but it's only on very few ships and it's still not a great uh, value, I don't think. It's still expensive and it's not gonna give you as good a service as you're gonna get from being on the Wi-Fi, even the ship Wi-Fi, which is Starlink for most cruise brands now which is hits and misses for certain cruise lines. But to me, there's no real reason to ever leave your cell phone on cellular service on a cruise. At this point, I highly recommend against it. Put your phone in airplane mode. That will leave Wi-Fi open. Obviously, you can connect to any of the cruise line apps and use the app without an internet package. It will connect you to the Wi-Fi. It will allow you to use apps. There are some glitches on some of the cruise lines where it will allow you to text without doing that. But don't bank on that because that's not the case all the time. It's usually for older phones that haven't been updated, etc. So let's get into now the actual cell phone coverage and different things. You will see some creators some people trying to sell you on um, you know, services. There's a million of them. I don't wanna throw anybody under the bus because they're probably good services. They're still not valuable to use on a cruise line. These are things like SIM cards where you get X amount of data. Remember now, if you are a normal phone user, I'm a Gen Xer, so I'm not a millennial or a Gen Zer. My phone is attached to my hip just like everyone else's. I am constantly getting email. My apps are constantly updating. I'm looking at the weather. I'm looking at all these different things. All of those things are using data. If you look at any of those plans for SIM cards, etc., they are all still very, very remedial. You're getting a few gigs of data for $150. A few gigs of data I can go through in Literally, I'm not exaggerating. I can go through that in minutes. If you downloaded something, if you were watching a YouTube videos, if you were watching TikToks, you are gonna burn through data very quickly. So be very cautious of these, get this SIM card, you get five gigs a day, or you get whatever you get, five gigs for your whole trip. It's, that's not enough data for you to go on a cruise and leave your cellular on and have, you know, or use that SIM card as a service and, and be able to effectively do whatever you're trying to do. So first off, if you can afford to and you need to join the uh, cruise Wi-Fi programs, some of them are not you know, inordinately expensive. There are usually a few tiers like basic internet where you can check your email, you could text, make a phone call if you need to. And then there is streaming where you could download some things and hypothetically stream things. I have run the gamut. I've been on 30 some cruises in the past three years. I do not recommend trying to stream live television or Netflix or anything like that. I consistently hear people tell me that it works great. They do it all the time on their cruises. They watch live TV. I have YouTube TV, which is a streaming service. I haven't had Comcast or cable or anything like that in over 10 years. I am generally an early adapter of technology obviously. I have a brand new iPhone 16 Pro Max. Um, I have never been able to confidently stream things without buffering, without things taking forever. Even sending text messages takes a long time. So I will tell you that if you need to use the Wi-Fi and you're just going to send and receive some emails and stuff, you're fine with the basic package. Otherwise, if you need streaming, which I always get because we do work on board, some uploading and downloading some things, which isn't always the best experience, 
but it does work. I can sometimes FaceTime and do some Google Meet or Zooms, but they do not work great. So again, your mileage may vary. I have people tell me all the time that it works amazingly and they stream and download. I have not had those experiences. I've downloaded some things on Netflix, uh, on Royal Celebrity, all the other cruise lines, and I've been able to download some things. It does take a long time, but I've been able to download like 20, 30 minute shows um, over the course of a few hours and they download and it works fine. So there you go. Now let's get into these cell phone providers. That was a long intro. Now let's get into the cell phone providers, because if you need that service on board the ship, that's the service to go with. Go with the, you know, Wi-Fi that the ships and the, and the cruise lines provide. It is an additional cost. If you don't need it, you don't need it. Now, when you're getting off the ship or you're in ports, you are going to have a few options. So I'm going to talk about the tiers that cover those things. And then obviously there are lower tiers that wouldn't. So let's first talk about Google Fi. I used to have Google Fi. I enjoyed it. The network works really well. Google Fi Unlimited Plus is $65 a month per line for your first line. You get unlimited data and text in over 200 destinations. To make a call, it's 20 cents a minute if you are actually making calls. And your data slows down after you use 50 gigs abroad. Also, if you stay 90 days or more overseas, they will shut your data off. Um, they'll suspend it um, because it's a like temporary plan. Otherwise, you would need to get internet, uh, you know, cellular service in that country, wherever you're, you're staying, or if you're just traveling for more than 90 days, if you're on like a world cruise. So Google Fi works very well. Again, you have to check the locations to make sure wherever you're going, it's covered, you know, basic things. Don't rely on me or anyone else to tell you, oh yeah, it's going to work. They have a listing of countries and islands where it will work. Double check that before you make any decisions. Next up is Verizon Unlimited Ultimate. That is $90 a month for one line. Unlimited talk and text in 210 countries. Uh, so there you go. It doesn't cost you a penny to make or take calls to send text. So you can use your data just like you were here in America. However, your data is going to be slowed after 10 gigs. If you're going for a day and you're going to be on an island for a few hours, that should be fine. I mean, be cognizant that you don't need to look at your phone every two minutes when you're on an island, hopefully. So there you go. Uh, that is for unlimited ultimate Verizon and you don't have to pay for calls there. AT&T does not have one that it's covered all over the place with, which is what I used to have. They do have a $12 a day day pass. This just went up recently. It used to be $10 a day. Uh, you will see that if you pop off the ship, turn your phone back on off of airplane mode, you'll get a text message that says, welcome to the Bahamas. Welcome to Nassau. Welcome to Perfect Day, wherever you're at. Um, you have a $12 a day pass. It is unlimited talks, tech, and data. And I'm sure they throttle after a certain amount of data, but it works just like your normal cell phone. Again, that's what I used to have. And it worked very, very well with that additional cost there. I've recently switched over to T-Mobile, which I used on my last cruise. Again, I'm in airplane mode. As soon as I get off the ship or we dock, I pop it back on. T-Mobile Go 5G Next is $90 a month for one line. You get unlimited text and five gigs of high-speed data in 215 countries. I went through and made sure most of the places that I go to, it's covered, right? So most of the time I'm in the Bahamas, I'm in the Caribbean, Cozumel, Costa Maya, all of those are covered. If you do need to make calls, which I rarely need to make, uh, they are 25 cents a minute. That's not a big deal for me if I needed to make a five minute call and it cost me $1.50, that's totally fine. Um, you just don't wanna get nailed with all those charges of leaving your phone on. And then the reason that I chose T-Mobile is because in addition to all of those things, if I have to fly to my cruise destination, on most cruise lines, I would say like 80% of cruise lines, again, you have to check and make sure you get free Wi-Fi on your airline. I think I said air. On your airline and you get text and talk and data and all while you're flying, which to me is a great benefit if I'm doing something, if I'm trying to get some work done or just send a couple emails so I don't fall behind while I'm flying. I know most people don't care about that. I get the comments all the time of, I'm on vacation. I'm just shutting off my phone. Just shut off your phone and enjoy yourself. That's great that you could do that. I can't do that. So um, I'm working for two different companies. I have elderly parents that I don't want to lose track of for hours. I get it. We all grew up in a time where, you know, we didn't have cell phones. I was there. I lived it. I had a beeper in the 90s. Um, so, uh, but I need to use my phone. I need to check email. I need to respond to things. And I need to keep an eye on my family. So that's important to me. 
probably not important to you, and that's fine. So um, those are your options for the big carriers. There, of course, are other carriers. There's amazing, uh, like I said, there's these SIM providers that you could buy. You could buy a SIM card, use it overseas. I hear people tell me all the time they work great in Europe specifically. My criticism of those is just don't try to use them on the cruise ship as your internet for the entire week. That is going to be exorbitantly expensive. Uh, same with just leaving your phone on. So shut your phone off, put it in airplane mode, and get the Wi-Fi package if you really need it. Otherwise, throw that phone in the safe and enjoy your vacation. Enjoy the kind of time down. I wish I could do it, but I can't. So those are our tips for today. If you found this useful, we would love for you to subscribe to our channel. Come along, join us on this fun cruise journey. Thank you so much. If you're going on a cruise this weekend, hope you have a wonderful time. I will see everybody tomorrow. Happy cruising. Bye.